Luka Doncic has always been a championship caliber superstar, but the problem is that the Dallas Mavericks have never had a championship level roster until now. Could be fun. Before the trade deadline, the Mavs made small moves that ultimately allowed the team to have more pieces around the duo of Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving. The new players they acquired aren't stars, but are looking like perfect pieces to put around the two superstars in the hopes that this new team could eventually make a strong push for the playoffs. With Doncic in his sixth year in the NBA, the Mavs need to make him happy enough to keep him in the long run, especially now when the expectations on his shoulders are heavier than ever. The NBA is at its most competitive in recent years, and it's looking like anyone in the West can compete for a championship. But let's look at why the new look Mavs can possibly shock us as potential title contenders. Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving have been playing at superstar levels this season. The Mavs have been enjoying incredible performances from its backcourt duo. But while Doncic is set to lead the league in scoring while Irving is having one of his best and most efficient seasons, it didn't look like this team was on its way to championship contention, especially during the earlier part. Irving the other way behind the back and into Grace now. The Mavs live and die on Doncic's production, which means that he has to have players who are capable of spacing the floor or rolling to the basket. Derek Lively II has been performing efficiently as a rookie and is the center that Doncic always needed. Meanwhile, every other player on the team could shoot from the outside. But while the offense has been clicking, the problems often come out on the defensive end. Luka is an above average defender, and Kyrie can compete well on the defensive end as well. But Dallas hasn't been the best defensive team all season long, and everyone on that team can be blamed for the Mavs' inability to prevent opposing teams from scoring. There's also the fact that the Mavericks just don't have the cohesiveness that other teams in the West have. They aren't as defensively talented as the Minnesota Timberwolves. And outside of Doncic and Irving, the Mavs don't have the overall talented levels that the Los Angeles Clippers, the Denver Nuggets, and the Oklahoma City Thunder have, making it difficult for them to compete with the top teams in the West. And they turn it over. Dallas in the open court. But the Mavericks front office may have struck gold during the trade deadline when Dallas made moves to acquire Daniel Gafford and P.J. Washington while getting rid of Grant Williams, whom Luka and Kyrie were never really fond of. While the moves don't seem to be important enough because neither Gafford nor Washington have star talents, the team has been looking better than it did before the trade deadline. Dallas scored 146 against the Thunder shortly after the trade. The Mavs also enjoyed wins against the Suns and Raptors while barely losing to the streaking Cleveland Cavaliers, who won through a miraculous half-court shot. There are still some areas that the Mavs need to clean up, but the point is that the team seems to be playing better than ever, especially on the offensive end. The first acquisition that pops up is Daniel Gafford. While he was never a star-level player and is barely a starter, Gafford is one of the best pick-and-roll players in the league and is excellent at finishing close to the basket. Oh, offensive rebound! Balls to Gafford! Nice finish! A year ago, he averaged 73.2% from the field while playing for the Washington Wizards. This season, he's leading the league in field goal percentage and is also serviceable as a rim protector, averaging 2.2 blocks for Washington before he got traded to Dallas. Before Gafford's arrival, there was a huge downgrade from Lively at the starting center to Dwight Powell as the backup big man. Powell is a good finisher, but doesn't have the same inside presence that Gafford has. Maxi Kleber also played heavy minutes at center whenever the Mavs wanted to stretch the floor. But Kleber's rim protection is almost non-existent. Gafford is the perfect backup center for both Luka and Kyrie because he's excellent at rolling to the basket off a pick and is one of the best targets for point guards who rely a lot on the pick and roll. He doesn't space the floor, but he more than makes up for it with his incredible finishing ability and innate talent at knowing where he needs to be for a point guard to find him. Then there's P.J. Washington who fills in the role left by Grant Williams at the power forward position. Williams was a good offseason pickup for the Mavs in 2003, but rumors say that he lacked conditioning and was a locker room distraction because Doncic and Irving reportedly found him annoying. Washington brings in more length and finishing at the power forward spot. He isn't as steady with his outside shooting, but he's a better overall scorer than Williams, making him another excellent target for Doncic and Irving passes. From the looks of it, Gafford and Washington 
Covington can add size, length, athleticism, and finishing to this Dallas team. The Mavs may have lost steady outside shooters to acquire these guys, but they've unlocked the abilities of Luka and Kyrie, who have been playing out of their minds ever since the trade. Since the Mavs made the trade, now with the opportunity to get uh -oh. another one, PJ Washington! Doncic has been averaging around 34 points, 9 rebounds, and 11 assists while shooting over 53% from the field. Meanwhile, Kyrie has been averaging more than 27 points on more than 52% from the field. Having more offensive threats on the floor freed the offensive outputs of the Mavs' backcourt duo. Luka, of course, now has more targets to choose from. The Mavs consistently score at least 110 points since making that trade, and it's all because the Dallas offense seems to be more fluid with Gafford and Washington playing on the front court, allowing Doncic and Irving to have more freedom to operate on the offensive end. But while the offense has been consistent and loose, the defense has been struggling. Before the trade, the Mavs weren't a good defensive team. They were consistently in the worst 10 in terms of defensive rating in the league. There's no true defensive anchor on this squad, and it's going to be too much to ask both Luka and Kyrie to compete as hard on defense as they do on offense. The trade pieces that they gave up to acquire Gafford and Washington weren't exactly good defenders as well, and that means that the trade was a win-win situation for Dallas on both offense and defense. Dallas in the open court. Great the problem, however, is that players are often slower to adjust to new defenses compared to new offenses. Neither Gafford nor Washington are great defenders. They are serviceable defenders in their own right, but they're hardly key defensive pieces for a top-level defensive piece. It's going to take a while for them to adjust to the Mavs' defensive schemes, especially when they come from teams that don't exactly excel on that end of the floor. As far as the team's offense is concerned, the Mavs have what it takes to match points with the best that the league has to offer, but it's going to be hard to call this team a championship contender when it struggles to limit opposing offense offenses. The Indiana Pacers and the Boston Celtics, which are the two best offenses in the league, recently defeated the Mavs in blowout games by scoring over 130 points each. It might be a small sample size, but it's going to be hard to imagine the Mavs playing well enough to stop the best Western offenses consistently in a seven-game series when they can't keep the best offenses in the league from scoring 130 points. Is this new-look Mavs team good enough to win a championship this season? Well, that's very unlikely, because the West is too deep for Dallas to compete against. But it's not too far off to say that this team could improve next season, especially after spending a whole training camp working on defensive sets together. The best-case scenario for this team is to find a way to get out of the play-in tournament situation and secure the sixth seed in the West. But with the West so competitive, the Mavs have to make serious adjustments to have a chance to secure a spot for the playoffs. Whatever the Mavs need to do, they have to do it quickly because there's no telling how long Luka Doncic will stay patient with the team's inability to compete for a championship. Dallas needs to compete for a title now or in the next season if they don't want to see their best player hopping zip codes anytime soon.